I'm going to give you a brief overview of the anatomy of a master's thesis. I want you to note here the companion website which provides detailed videos, handouts, and examples. And it's at thesis-uoitmed.weebly.com. Now here are the 10 components of a master's thesis. The title, abstract, introduction, literature review, method, results, discussion, conclusion, references, and appendices. Note that the introduction, literature review, method, results, discussion, and conclusion are organized based on your research questions. The title is pretty self-explanatory. What isn't as obvious is once you have your research questions and you a good idea of your topic, create a title. It will give you direction. It's surprising how that works, but don't leave your title to last. Do it early on in the process. The abstract is a one-page maximum summary of your study. It provides a big picture rationale, usually one, one sentence, a purpose statement, also one sentence. You describe the participants, also another sentence. You present a summary of the results, could be three to four sentences, and a sentence about future research. It is written after you've completed the entire thesis. The introduction is roughly three to five pages long. It provides the big picture rationale about why your topic is important. Three to four paragraphs, it's the kind of explanation that you might give at a party about why what you're doing is important in the big scheme of things. Then you provide a gap analysis based on your literature review. So you want to take a look at the key issues in the literature review that you're going to address. And in a paragraph each, you identify the gap or problem area and the specific area that will relate to your research question. So it's important only to identify the gaps that are relating to your research questions and not other areas. Otherwise, someone will say, well, why didn't you address that? And then finally, you will give a purpose, a general purpose statement about your study, followed by your specific research questions. The next section is quite long, 20 to 30 pages, and it involves reviewing 50 or more articles on your area. Often I've seen somewhere between 50 and 75 articles. It is organized by themes and sub-themes related to your research questions. So the themes relate to each of your research questions. You probably have two or three. And then there are sub-themes within that. And so the literature fits in that. You want to organize, and I can't stress this enough, your literature review around those research questions. And you don't want to include information that is not related to your research questions. It can be directly related or tangentially related, but you don't want to start talking about other things that are interesting but are not related to the focus of your thesis, which is your research questions. Did I mention that it has to be in research questions? The next section is the method, and it's typically 10 to 20 pages long, and I'm giving rough estimates of pages. These aren't set in stone. It depends on the kinds of methods that you've used. So the first part of it is describing your design philosophy, and that is, you will take that from Cresswell, Look up Cresswell and in the companion site uh, under method, and you will find suitable text to help you create that design philosophy. Then you'll talk about the participants, the context of where these participants were in the study, the data collection tools, the procedure used to collect data, and the data analysis, how you actually analyzed your data. The next section is the results section. It's 15 to 30 pages long, typically. And again, it's organized by research questions. And you want to actually 
Remember back in the first, the introduction where you presented your research questions, you present them in a certain order and you want to maintain that parallel structure in your literature review, in your results section, and in your discussion section. So this section is also organized by research questions and within each research question you're organizing it by the data type that you collected. So you would present research question one and then the survey data from research question one, the open-end responses relating to question one, and the interview data relating to question one. Of course this is just an example but it's research question by data type. That's how the results are organized. The discussion is typically 10 to 15 pages long. It is also organized by research questions in the same order that they were presented in the introduction and in the literature review and in the results section. And essentially you're merging the literature review with the results. You're comparing the results you had to the literature review and what was reported there. Either it's the same, it's different, or you have a new result. You will also discuss the educational implications of your study, and then the limitations in future research. So I like to combine those sections. So you have limitations, you identify a limitation, and then you take that limitation and identify an opportunity for future research. The conclusion, which could be part of the discussion if you want to put it as a section, or you could have a separate section. I tend to put it part of the discussion because it's relatively short. It's one to three pages long. It's really a quick and dirty overview of your thesis. Someone who just wants to go down to the conclusion and say, well, what was found? So you present the key findings organized by research questions and a final statement about future research. The reference section is 8 to 15 pages long, depending on how many references you collected. What is critical about this section is that you follow APA format and that you only include references that were included in your thesis. No other references. I'll go back to this point. The APA format is critical and you want to make sure that it's really, it's absolutely perfect because you will be judged on the quality of your thesis based on this APA format. If you can't follow simple directions for APA format, one starts to wonder where there are flaws in the rest of the thesis. Finally, you have the appendices that are at the end of the thesis, which would include your consent form, uh, survey questions, if you ask them, interview questions, focus group, group questions. They might also include uh, tests that you presented to your participants. So that's at the end of your thesis. And that's an overview of a master's thesis.